Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we are creating some budget-friendly outdoor DIYs for your garden or patio. They turned out beautiful and I hope you get tons of inspiration in today's video. Our first project, we're using one of Dollar Tree's garden dishes, as well as two of the plastic scalloped bowls. You can also find these at Family Dollar in a pack of four for $1 versus Dollar Tree's pack of four for $1.25. Once I remove all of the stickers, I'm gonna wipe any kind of glue excess off, and then I'm going to give the largest garden dish two coats of Waverly's chalk paint in the color crimson on the bottom side of the garden dish. Allow that to dry and for the smaller ones, one of those I'm going to give two coats of Waverly's chalk paint in the color peacock, which turns out to be a beautiful blue. And the second one, I am going to take some white chalk paint and then I'm going to mix some Folk Arts Daybreak Yellow in that. I wasn't sure how well the acrylic paint was going to adhere to the plastic, so I decided to add some white chalk paint in. Now I added a little bit too much white. It was a little too pale. So I do end up going over top of that with just the Daybreak Yellow acrylic paint and it gave it that perfect pop of yellow color. Once all of your paint has dried, we're gonna take some white chalk paint as well as three different sizes of Dollar Tree's Pouncer sponge brushes. I'm gonna take the largest one, which is the blue one, dab it into my white chalk paint and kind of get that even around the end of the sponge. Then you can apply it directly to the garden dish, kind of push it around to give it even pressure on all sides and then lift it straight up. If it doesn't come out in a perfect circle, you can just go right back over it and kind of blend that in to get the perfect circle that you're looking for. Now you can add as many circles on here as you like. Once I get those on there, I'm gonna set that one to the side and let it dry. And I'm going to take the purple pouncer's brush or sponge and use that size for the blue and yellow bowl. Now this one does have some indentions in it, so it takes a little bit more time to get those perfect circles on there. You just kind of have to push it around and kind of get the paint down inside of those indentions. But I loved using these bowls because of those scalloped edges. These are just gonna make the perfect mushrooms for our garden. Now, once you have all of the circles on there that you like, depending on how many you wanna add on there, I'm gonna go back and then take the green pouncer sponge and I can add some smaller circles in between some of those larger circles to give it a different um, variation of sizes. And then I'll take the purple sponge, which was the one we originally added on the blue and yellow, and I can use that size to add smaller circles on top of the red mushroom. Again, you can just play around with this and add as many circles or as less amount of circles as you like. Now you wanna make sure that these thoroughly dry before you put anything else on it, any kind of sealant. So while those are drying, I'm going to take two of Dollar Tree's terracotta pots, as well as a plastic tumbler that I found at Walmart for 50 cent. Now the terracotta pots measure three and a half inches across the top and three and a half inches tall. The tumbler is also three and a half inches across the top. It's about six and three quarters of an inch tall. I'm gonna give these a coat of white chalk paint. Now the terracotta pots, I only needed to apply one coat, but the tumbler, I did have to apply two coats. Again, make sure everything is dry, and because we're gonna be setting these outside, and it's going to expose our paint to the elements, I'm going to give this a coat of Mod Podge. Now I'm adding a gloss Mod Podge because I want that sheen, I want it to look shiny, and I want to be able to easily wipe this off. So I'm gonna add this in a circular motion because as the Mod Podge dries, you will be able to see some of those brush strokes. 
So I'm gonna apply that to all of our plastic bowls as well as the plastic cup and the terracotta pots. So you just wanna get a nice good seal on everything. And then I let mine dry for 24 hours before I attached each of the pieces together. And as you can see here, once everything dries, it just has a beautiful glossy sheen to it. Now I'm going to attach mine using E6000. For the larger garden dish, I want to attach the bottom of the cup to the inside center of the garden dish. So I'm applying my E6000 and leaving a few little spaces so that I can add some hot glue for that temporary hold to give it time for that E6000 to set up. When I apply the cup in there, I am gonna push down, make sure all that E6000 kind of gets spread out right there in the center and then let that cure for about 24 hours. I did the same thing for the terracotta pots, except I'm going to apply the glue to the rim of the terracotta pot because I liked the design at the bottom looking better sticking out from under those plastic bowls. Now I let mine set for 24 hours before I put them outside, but it should only take a few hours for the glue to dry. Now, once you have all of this together, these turned out so beautiful. I love these pops of color. I just adore how this project turned out. And when I place them in my garden and I walk across the yard, it just provides this beautiful color. I just love it. It just makes my eyes happy. And I hope you guys like this project too. Now for our next project, we're gonna make a garden turtle. I'm using this pet bowl from Family Dollar. It was $2.50. It had these handles on the side, which I thought would be perfect for a turtle. Now I'm gonna give this two coats of Waverly's chalk paint in the color moss. When it dries, it's just this beautiful deep green. Now, I also made sure I painted the bottom side inside rim because you will be able to see some of that when you get your project complete. Using one of Dollar Tree's foam brushes, I pulled that off of the end of the tab and just cut each of the corners off. And then because it has these plastic pieces at the bottom, I didn't want that to get in the way of my paint. So I trimmed the edges of those off. And then you can just put your sponge back onto your handle. And we are going to create a design for our turtle using Waverly's chalk paint in the color celery, which is a lighter green. And we're gonna do this just like we did with project number one by dabbing the sponge or the foam brush into the paint. And then for this one, I do have to take a paintbrush and kind of smear it around to make sure all of the edges are covered. And then you just take your fingers and kind of push around, and if it doesn't get the design, like for all of mine, I did have to flip the brush upside down to get that bottom half because of the handle. It wasn't allowing me to really get that bottom piece covered. And then where the little rim comes up, you can take your paintbrush and kind of touch that up. So I kind of alternated the designs, kind of tilting them side to side. For the feet, we're going to use four of Dollar Tree's smallest terracotta pots. Now, I do recommend you get two out of one pack and two out of the other because they come three in a pack, and they're not all the same height. So you want at least two of the feet to be the same height than the other two feet. I gave those a coat of the moss chalk paint, and then we're going to use two of Dollar Tree's plastic eggs. These measure about three inches long, seven inches diameter, and one of Dollar Tree's plastic baseballs. Take one of the eggs, open it up, flip it around, and insert the smallest end into the largest end at an angle. We're going to attach this using some E6000, so you kind of just want it to come up at an angle, and we're gonna take the other egg and do the exact same thing. You're just flipping it around, kind of inserting it into an angle where the opening is kind of tilted up, and then you're gonna secure it in place with some E6000. You can add a dot of hot glue just to kind of hold it in place until your E6000 sets up. Like on for this one, I just added a dot of hot glue at the top to make sure that it stayed in place till everything dried. And I'll give you a little bit of a closer view so you'll be able to see exactly how I'm putting this egg together. You just wanna make sure that it is tilted where the opening is up and it kinda looks like this. Now we're gonna take that plastic baseball 
It has some writing on it. You want to make sure you attach the writing to the inside of the egg so you don't see that and you have your designs in the front. And we're going to attach that again using some E6000 and then a little bit of hot glue in some of those areas where we don't apply the E6000. Then you'll set your baseball onto your egg, making sure again that your wording or lettering is inside the egg so it doesn't interfere with your turtle's face. And then I took some hot glue and went around the outside edge to kind of not only seal it in, but it's going to give it a stronger hold. So it's going to look something like this, and you're going to let that dry. Then we're going to give each of these two coats of the moss chalk paint, and you're going to paint the entire piece, the outside. You don't need to paint the inside of the egg. And this creates the tail and the head for our turtle. Now I'm going to make his face and I'm using one of Dollar Tree's pouncer brushes and white chalk paint and then I could just create two circles for the eyes. You want to make sure that that chalk paint completely dries before you take an oil-based sharpie or you could take a regular sharpie and you can fill in the dark part of the eyes as well as the nose and the mouth. And then I gave it a few eyelashes. So you can be really creative during this process and just really create a really cute face for your turtle. So the way your turtle face is, you wanna make sure that it has the neck part going down. So that's where that egg kind of came up. And you'll see in just a minute, like when we put it all together, that that's how you wanna draw your face where the neck is up under it so it kind of comes out from under your pet bowl. Now, isn't she a beauty? And then of course, once I drew the face, my camera just kind of emphasized on her face. So now all the paint has dried. And when I took the face out, my camera just didn't know what to focus on. So I apologize for the blurry footage, but I'm going over all of these with a coat of Mod Podge, the gloss sheen, so I'll be able to wipe everything off. And then I'm gonna let all of that dry. Now, because I want to be able to put a flower pot inside of mine, because it is large enough to put a flower pot, I'm gonna drill a few holes in the bottom for drainage. So when I water my flowers, the water, the excess water will be able to drain out properly. Now, once I have those in place, we can start attaching the tail and the head for our turtle. So I'm going to attach the tail where the bottom part of this egg is where the, it's gonna go in, but the tail's kinda gonna lean up when you flip it over, if that makes sense. I'm going to attach it using some E6000, and you can put a dot of hot glue on there to hold it in place so that you can kinda move it around. Then I'm going to use the same glue to attach the head, and this is where you will See the little face, you're gonna flip it upside down like this and attach it onto that other handle of your pet bowl. And be generous with that E6000 because you really wanna get a good hold since I'm gonna have this outside. I did add a little bit of hot glue to hold it in place. And then I took one of the small terracotta pots to lean up against it to let that E6000 set up. Then I'm going to add the E6000 to the bottom part of each of these small terracotta pots. Again, I apologize. My camera, for some reason, just didn't want to work right that day. It went out of focus. So as I'm adding the feed on there, it gets a little bit blurry. But you're basically just going to add E6000 and then apply all four of those terracotta pots to the bottom of your pet bowl to create your turtle's feet. I let mine set for about 24 hours. And then you can put your flower pot in there. This turned out absolutely adorable and it holds a very large pot full of flowers. It is absolutely cute and looks so good with our mushrooms. If you're enjoying today's projects and you haven't done so already, I would love for you to become part of our community by clicking on the subscribe button below this video. To all my current subscribers, thank you so much. I appreciate each and every one of you. I would also love for you to visit me on all my other social media accounts. All those links are in my description box below. Our next project is a very easy to do thrifted bird bath. I found this ceramic candle holder at the thrift store for $3.99. Using E6000 and one of Hobby Lobby's wood circles that come in an assorted pack, I'm going to attach this to the top of the candlestick to give me a nice even 
place to attach this absolutely gorgeous glass bowl that I've had for many years. I only paid a few dollars for it. It has a gorgeous design in it. It is glass on the inside, but I'm not sure what material it is on the outside. It doesn't feel like glass, but it is the perfect color as well as this candlestick is the perfect color for me to attach at the top to make a bird bath. Now, I did set a candle, like something heavy on the inside to let that E6000 set up. I also sealed with some caulk between the glass bowl and the candlestick so that wood would not get water on it. Then I set it in my garden filled it with water, and this is absolutely gorgeous. For just a few dollars, you have a beautiful bird bath, and I love the detail on this. It is just simply gorgeous, and I hope you guys like it too. For our last project, we're using one of Dollar Tree's pie pans. It measures nine and five eighths across the top, seven and three eighths across the bottom, two of Dollar Tree's chargers, they're 13 inches across the top, and then that indention at the bottom is seven and a half inches. Once you remove all the labels, I'm gonna take some rubbing alcohol and a paper towel and go over all of these pieces thoroughly to make sure they're clean, free from fingerprints, and then allow that to completely dry. Then we're gonna head outside, and I'm gonna give this two coats of Fusion All-in-One Metallic Copper Spray Paint. So I searched all over the internet and several different websites said that acrylic-based paint is safe for bird feeders and bird baths. And Krylon Fusion's um, Copper Paint is an acrylic-based paint. Also, the sealant that I will be using is acrylic-based. So I applied several thin coats of the copper paint and allowed that to dry for 24 hours before applying Krylon's Gloss Crystal Clear Sealant Spray. And I gave that two thin coats on all pieces and I allowed that to dry for 48 hours. Now it gave it this beautiful copper color and because this is acrylic based paint, it will be safe for our feathered friends. So I'm going to attach the pie pan to the center of one of the chargers using some E6000 on the bottom of that pie pan. I'm going to center that up, apply firm pressure, and then I'm going to allow that E6000 to set up for another 24 hours before I handle it. Once that has set up, I am going to take two of Dollar Tree's 14-inch wire wreath forms as well as two of their metal plant hangers. So these are the metal chains that have the hook at the top and then they have the clips at the bottom. I'm going to attach these using the clips by flipping our wreath form over. It's going to be attached to the bottom side and I'm going to do this in every other section so we'll have evenly distributed weight. I'll do that for both of those wreath forms so that when you hang them up and you kind of pull your chains to the center, everything's going to hang nice and even. And then all you have to do is set your charger plate down inside of the wreath form. Now you could attach this to the wreath form with some E6000. I'm not going to do that because I want to be able to take mine out easily and clean it and wipe it off from any debris and then change out the water and the seeds. I'm gonna hang mine on a plant hanger. If you don't have one of these, you could hang it on a tree or a post. By the sounds of it, my sweet feathered friends are ready for this gorgeous bird bath and bird feeder. I absolutely love how they turned out. I love this gorgeous copper color. You guys will have to let me know what you think of this project, as well as all of the other projects in today's video. As always, if you have a favorite, please let me know in the comment section down below. And if you haven't done so already, I would love for you to click that subscribe button. Thank you so much for taking time out of your day to watch my video. Please take care, and I will see you guys next time.